The right amount of heat can turn a solid rock or metal into a liquid. What is the difference between solid rock and liquid rock? Solid rock does not change shape. Liquid rock takes on the shape of its surroundings. Pressure from the weight of the earth and movement of materials inside the earth can crush rocks. Over time, the effects of heat and pressure create the rock formations and other geologic phenomena that we find in the world. Working together, heat, pressure, and time create the three types of rocks that exist in the world. Every rock in the world can be placed into one of three categories. The three types of rocks are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Try saying each of these rock types out loud. Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. These are the three types of rocks. The first type of rock is... Igneous is the most common. Igneous rocks come in many forms. Some form entire mountains, and some appear as boulders jutting from the earth. This picture shows a close up of one type of igneous rock. This plain old gray rock contains different types of minerals, and it hasn't always been a plain old gray rock. The word igneous comes from the Latin word for fire because igneous rocks begin deep down in the heat of the Earth's mantle. The word igneous sounds similar to the word ignite, which means to light something on fire. Both come from ignis, the Latin word for fire. Making connections between words and root words will help you learn more words. As you have heard, The Earth's mantle is full of a hot, gooey, oozing substance known as magma or melted rock. The magma is constantly being forced toward the surface by pressure from within the Earth. As it travels upward from the mantle through the crust, the magma begins to cool and harden. Sometimes the magma will erupt from a volcano. But sometimes the conditions aren't quite right for an eruption. Over time, heat forms magma and pressure moves the magma. When the magma cools, it forms igneous rock. This formation is called Half Dome and it is located in Yosemite National Park in California. When you look at Half Dome, you are looking at an old magma chamber. A magma chamber is a pocket or place in the Earth's crust where magma collects. As more magma enters the chamber, it gets hotter and pressure builds, and the magma can force its way up to the surface in the form of a volcano. Or sometimes, as in the case of Half Dome, the magma just gathers in the chamber and stays there without erupting. For whatever geologic reason, the heat and pressure did not get great enough or strong enough to force the magma through the crust and onto the surface in the form of lava. Instead, the magma cooled and hardened within the chamber. Over time, the rocks and soil around the chamber eroded away, leaving beautiful half dome alone, sticking high up above the earth. Half Dome is certainly a big igneous rock. Another type of igneous formation occurs when magma intrudes or pushes itself between two existing layers of rock. This means that not all the layers in this mountain were formed one on top of the other. Rather, some of the layers forced their way in between other rocks. This is my favorite type of igneous rock, obsidian, better known as volcanic glass. Volcanic glass forms when certain types of lava cool and harden, becoming smooth, shiny, and glass like. Only certain types of lava under certain conditions become volcanic glass. 
Characteristics of volcanic glass are smooth, shiny, and glass-like. Some Native Americans used volcanic glass to make arrowheads and spearheads. If you break a piece of volcanic glass, you will find that it is incredibly sharp and strong. Every now and then I find ancient artifacts or objects made by people long ago, like this when I'm out rock hunting. After igneous, the second major rock type is sedimentary. Sedimentary rocks are not formed like igneous rocks, which form from cooled magma. In fact, heat does not play much of a role at all in the formation of sedimentary rocks. Instead, pressure and time are the most important factors in the formation of sedimentary rocks. The word sediments refers to tiny little particles such as dirt or rock, which are carried along in water, ice, wind, or landslides. If you dump a spoonful of sand into a glass of water, for instance, you will see the sand gradually sink down and settle on the bottom of the glass, much in the same way that sediments settle on the bottoms of lakes and oceans. Here, sink means to drop below the surface of water. Sediments are always floating around in lakes, oceans, and rivers. Over time, sediments in lake water settle and form a thick sludge on the bottom of a lake. As more and more sediments settle on the bottom, more and more weight presses down on the sludge. Over time, the pressure from the weight of the upper sediments ca can cause the sludge to harden into a rock. Through time and pressure, layers of sediments are turned into sedimentary rock. Coal is a type of sedimentary rock that comes from decayed plants that have been under pressure for many years. Decayed plants are plants that have died, and their remains have naturally broken down over time and gone back into the soil. Coal is an important energy source. People burn coal in order to create electricity for homes and to make energy to power machines and factories. People get coal and other important rocks, minerals, and metals by mining them from the earth. One way to mine coal is by digging a mine shaft or tunnel deep down into the earth. Another sedimentary rock is called iron ore. Ore is a rock that contains valuable minerals or metals. There are many different types of ore in the world, but iron ore is one of the most important. Iron ore is the source of iron, a strong metal which is used to make steel. Steel, in turn, is used to build bridges, cars, buildings, tools, and other things you see and use every day. Sandstone is one common type of sedimentary rock. Wherever you find sandstone, there is a good chance that you are walking in a place that used to be completely underwater. At one time or another, every place on Earth has been completely submerged in or covered with water. Thus, sandstone is quite common throughout the world. This photo was taken in Bryce Canyon in the state of Utah, which is known for its unique sandstone formations. Here is another sandstone canyon I thought you would like to see. Antelope Canyon in Arizona is a very special place. It is known as a slot canyon, which is formed over many, many years as water from rain and floods rushes through the sandstone, causing it to erode. These cliffs are made of limestone, another type of sedimentary rock. Limestone is interesting because it is composed mainly of minerals left over from ancient sea creatures like clams, oysters, and other shellfish. When these creatures died, their shells sank down to the ocean floor 
and settled with the other sediments. Over time, the churning oceans around the shells ground them into a fine white powder. The powder settled and more shells and sediments put pressure on it. It took many, many years, but eventually all the powdery shells left over were compressed into limestone. If limestone is subjected to intense pressure for an even longer period of time, it can turn into another kind of rock called marble. Marble is very hard, and it often has a beautiful, pure white color. People have used marble for thousands of years to make fine buildings and sculptures. Marble is known as metamorphic rock, which is the third and least common type of rock. Metamorphic comes from the Greek word for transformation or change. Metamorphic rocks are formed when other types of rocks undergo intense heat and pressure and change or metamorphose into new kinds of rocks. Congratulations! You are becoming a geologist. Now you know about the three rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Won't everyone be impressed when you tell them about the new words you learned?